hey, welcome to fall 2020. Um, this is very different from previous falls for me, certainly. Um, hopefully you all are staying safe. This is a class on how, um, how humans can interact with machine learners. So thinking about, we are going to have lots of AI agents. How do we want to interact with them? How should we interact with them? And what does it mean or what's different when those agents are learning instead of just, um, instead of being static? So uh, many, some students feel more comfortable calling me Professor Taylor. I, I really would prefer to go by Matt. Uh, I, I find that if students uh, address me as Matt, then they're more likely to uh, call me out when I say something dumb or uh, to challenge me. And I think that's important. If you would like to ask questions or comments, you should at any point feel free to um, unmute yourself and just interrupt. Uh, it, I was thinking of asking people to raise hands, but because there are multiple people in the class, I can't always see everyone. And there's a better chance, if, I guess there's a raised hand button in Zoom, but I'm more likely to miss it. Um, so if you, if you have any questions or comments, do just unmute yourself. Um, also, I'm trying to use Discord this semester. So in Discord, we're able to have uh, discussions and comments. So there is now a specific channel called Questions and Comments about Max Lectures. So if you would like to, um, if you don't want to unmute yourself and talk, you are absolutely welcome to um, use the, uh, use that chat. Um, this is also true. So if, because we are recording, if you don't want um, to be on the recording, then you know, keep your camera off. You can ask questions through the, uh, through the Discord and you don't need to be on the web. But because I'm teaching this class for the first time, um, and everything's online, I figured it, try, it made sense to try to make this all available to other people. Um, so if, if you are registered for the class, you're in this Zoom meeting and you're able to interact in real time. If you are not registered for the class, then you can still get this material by uh, looking at the stuff on YouTube and the uh, website, but you won't have quite the same experience as those of us in, in the Zoom meeting. Okay, so where does that leave? Well, okay, why don't we talk a little bit about what this class is supposed to be about. The, the hope is that we, in either as individuals or groups, get a bunch of cool pilot studies done. So a pilot study is, so is, is a way of deciding, am, am I going to take this idea I have and test this hypothesis with a larger group? So for instance, you could come up with a hypothesis that, um, if an AI is explainable, then people are able to, to uh, better give it data so that it can learn. It can, people can give higher quality data. So a concrete example of that is, let's say you are trying to teach a machine learner how to look at pictures and tell you whether it's a cow, a dog, or something else. We could hypothesize that if the machine learner is explainable, then you should be able to look at it. A person should be able to look at it and realize, oh man, that's why it's not understanding cows. Let me give it a few examples of cows that are not on grass, but cows that are on the road. So then the machine learner understands that cows don't have to be on grass. So that's one example of a hypothesis we could test. But the hope is that over the first, first you know, third of the class, we'll do a broad outline, broad background, of what interactive machine learning is and does and can be used for. And then we'll start to, in, again, in groups or as individuals, we'll go and come up with some kind of hypothesis that you can use, use the tools that we learn in this class to then go evaluate. If it turns out that you, act, you came up with a cool idea and it seems like it works, then totally, let's go for a conference paper. Graduate students is all about getting publications. But if it doesn't work, 
let me put it this way, regardless of if it were, if your hypothesis is true or not, you can still get a great grade in this class. It's about going through the process and following the process, coming up with a hypothesis and testing it. It's not whether your, your pilot study happens to work out or not. Because if you're in science, you spend a lot of time making bad decisions and uh, coming up, doing experiments that were just a waste of time. Because that's the, that's the beauty of science. Matt, can I interrupt for a second? Please. Uh, the YouTube live stream is uh, not yet live and there's a number of people waiting. Oh, let's see. So I tried to do, thank you for interrupting with that. Um, let me try stopping the live stream and starting it again. Do, do, do. Stream on custom streaming service, preparing to stream. Oh, and it looks like there's a couple of things in the chat window. While I'm stopped, let me look at that. Sorry for the delay. I think Figured this uh, first day would not go perfectly smoothly. Uh, so far, no major problems. Um, yeah. It, uh, Zoom thinks it's uh, supposed to be streaming, but YouTube does not. So I'm afraid I don't. Uh, let's see. Um, it would be nice if I could give a comment at least to the people on YouTube. Nope, can't figure out how to do it. Okay, so I'll put, I'll put it in the Discord for you, Matt. Thank you, Nick. So, okay, so where does that leave us? Okay, so let's talk a bit more about what we're actually going to be doing. So, thinking about what does human AI interaction look like? So, we've spent humans have spent a lot of time thinking about how human human interaction works. How do you build effective teams? How do you get people to work together well and share knowledge effectively? That's very different from how a human and an AI are going to interact. Similarly, machine learning people spend a lot of time thinking about a lot of time thinking about how one agent can transfer knowledge or teach another agent or um, have multiple agents work together. But that's usually thinking about things at a very low level that humans won't be able to understand. So one of the, the theses of this class is that this human and AI interaction really will be different than human human or machine machine. And it's really its own thing. And the particular thing we're thinking about is what happens when that AI can learn. So if that AI can learn what the human wants to do or how to treat a particular human or how to model a human, all of that, is fair game and should be able to enhance the relationship between this, this human and the machine learner. So we can think about what are, what are the different goals that we could have and how could you interact? So I gave the earlier example about someone um, teaching a machine to label cows or dogs or not cows. So that's a very kind of abstract interaction, just trying to provide those labels so that a learner can do this a uh, very random task. But you could also think of something a little more interactive. So if I had a robot, I might want to teach it to clean up the cat's litter box. And I want it and, and you know, I can't really program. So I'm going to teach it how to do this. And robot, please don't do this after 10 p.m. because you're just going to wake me up and it's going to really annoy me. So trying to learn those preferences from a person. So, okay, you could, you could have the machine learner do things for you, but you could also think of teaming. So thinking about uh, a good example, well, a example that's popular right now is in the, the U.S. has developed a um, autonomous, or is developing an autonomous wingman. So having a fighter pilot that can work alongside an AI plane and thinking about how the human who has better reasoning abilities and high, higher um, inte intelligence and able to think about the, the mission goals and all of this, how the human can do that kind of stuff, while at the same time, the AI can make very quick decisions. It can make very accurate types of uh, decisions or uh, take very accurate actions that the human may be incapable of. 
So those two working together, the human and the machine working together can accomplish things that neither could do on their own. We'll also be talking a bit at the beginning of the class about how we do human subject studies. So we'll be um, uh, talking to a few different people about how, if you bring humans into the mix, how does that make things different? So if I am, if I'm in my normal machine learning setting, you know, I, I'm just in my basement and my computer is interacting with data. But now if we have humans and we are interacting with humans, how does that change things? How does that change the scientific method? But also how does that change uh, what we could possibly do and how we could test that stuff? Uh, if you haven't heard of it before, crowdsourcing is a pretty cool technique uh, that's been develop developing over time, where one of the popular platforms is Amazon's Mechanical Turk. So a bit of, a bit of AI history. Um, if you haven't heard of the Mechanical Turk, it was this uh, robot back around in the 1700s, I think, that played chess. So this cool chess playing robot, and there's um, a, a Turk uh, that would, the, the robot looked like uh, someone from Turkey. And of course, what it turned out is there was, there was not a, ro a robot playing chess in the 1700s. It was a very small man that was inside the box that was manipulating the, the chess pieces. So it, you, people thought it was a computer or a robot, but it was actually a human. So Amazon's Mechanical Turk is letting humans go and do uh, tasks that we think would take human computation. So one of the ways we'll be, we can use crowdsourcing in this class is to go and get a bunch of data if we want. Um, more likely, we'll think about uh, just how we could use crowdsourcing to do cool and different things. So for instance, a friend of mine, Walter Lisecki, had this program called Legion where you could be writing something in Word and a bunch of people on the crowd could go and edit it for you in real time. So they could do things like correcting spelling, but also go and like look up URLs for you or references or go and make your grammar better or go and add a concrete example. So this is a way of multiple people working together to improve one piece of writing and you need an AI to be able to, to uh, successfully be an intermediary there. And then in the kinds of uh, projects that we do as a class, they'll probably be more about thinking about how a human and a machine learning agent can support or interact with each other. But like I mentioned, we may be able to get up to something cool like uh, more complex like teaming. We're thinking about how people or a person and agents can work together to accomplish something that they can't, neither could do on their own. Okay, so I'd like, I, I wanna keep the focus on doing this pilot study because I think it gives us something concrete with a hard deadline and uh, we can look at you know, trying to make a, a paper that could be submitted to a conference so you get that kind of structure, but that's not the only outcome. So if, again, if, you're, if your project fails or if your hypothesis has, has showed faults, that's not that big a deal because you'll be getting all these other benefits. So we will be going through a bunch of um, machine learning stuff. The goal of this class is to not teach uh, new machine learning things. It is more to tell you about machine learning techniques that exist and how we can enhance those to interact with humans. But chances are by taking this class, you'll learn a bunch of new stuff about machine learning. You also get some experience reading research papers and presenting in critiquing stuff. So not, not all nerds uh, recognize that a big part of your job once you get out of grad school is going to be communication. So I always I try to emphasize to my students that you need to learn how to present and communicate with other people. Computer scientists, especially machine learning people have a tendency there are some cases where machine learning people are really good at talking with other machine learning people, but not necessarily with others. 
And I know there's a bunch of people in this class from different backgrounds. So, so people from rehabil rehabilitation medicine and electrical engineering. And the fact that we have that diversity is perfect. Not only because this class really is an interdisciplinary topic in itself, but also so that we can get the chance to practice talking to people across disciplines, because that really is, I think, a critical skill. And of course, we'll get some experience writing and presenting uh, research. So at the end, you'll need to present your project as well as write something up. Okay, so like I was saying before we started recording, um, this is a new class. I have not taught it before. So I, I've decided to put it online just because it seemed like the right thing to do because we're in a pandemic and why not make this uh, material available. But because it's the first time I'm teaching this class, there'll be some bumps. Um, there'll probably be some technology bumps. So you probably, you might have noticed that E-Class is down today. Surprise! Um, also, I sent out an email to all of you who are registered, and in the email, I included the wrong link to the live stream. And if you clicked on that link, you were treated to 30 seconds of me staring at the screen, being very confused. So that, that, was, that was awesome. It's, it's always nice to, to be like, yep, I have a PhD. I still make dumb, dumb computer science mistakes. Um, but there'll also be, so there'll probably be technical problems, but that's true of everywhere this fall. Um, but there'll also probably be some uh, content that will be more refined the second and third time I teach that. But that's always true. So what I'm going to really ask you, you all is to give me feedback as we go. So I'll be, I'll be poking you regularly to say, hey, how am I doing? What are you enjoying? What would you like more of? What would you like less of? What topics would be more interesting to you? But please do be proactive. If you think I am doing something that could be better, or if you have suggestions or something you think is particularly cool, please do let me know. And, and if, you're, uh, if you're really shy, you can make it an anonymous email, but just the, the more feedback you can give me, interaction, huh? uh, the more feedback you can give me, hopefully, the more fun this will be for all of us. Okay, so now is a great time for me to take a breath and stop uh, talking at you and see if there are questions or comments before I dive into the, uh, the syllabus. Uh, oh, I should also mention the, um, I'm using a CC by 4.0 license. So this is a Creative Commons. It means that anyone can use my material for anything, including for profit. So if one of you wanted to take all of my slides, turn it into a book and sell it, as long as you gave me uh, credit, then that would be completely legal. So feel free to use these slides, this, all of this material. You can use it for anything you want to. There is a kind of long uh, reading list. So this is me throwing together things that I think might be useful. There will be reading in the class. It, it won't be outrageous. Um, there will be some assigned reading. So please read this article by this date and write up a few sentences in e-class to show that you, you read it. But there'll, there'll also be some places where please read one of these three things so that, um, that you can tailor the, the course reading to what you think is most interesting. This will be particularly true for people with um, different levels of machine learning background. So if you are not deeply into machine learning, then you may disprefer a paper that is, is highly technical. Um, th oh, so the three short exercises. So I am going to give an example of one of those exercises in a few slides. So thank you for that. I'll, I'll remember to, to look at, to bring that up. Um, but the, the, the important thing about the short exercises is they should be short. I mean, I, we're, we're talking like an hour or two commitment. That is, is my hope. If, it's, if, it, if one of these ends up taking you five or 10 hours, I've made a mistake and we should correct that. Um, uh, hey, Matt. Yeah, please. Um, can you elaborate a little bit on how we're gonna be like forming the groups or for what part of the course we're gonna be working with groups and um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it, it will, 
um, the kind of the, the second two thirds of the class. And I'm not sure how we're going to do it yet. My, my guess is that I'll do something like asking people, well, first of all, who, who wants to work in a group instead of working alone? Um, and then things like, you know, do you want to do supervised learning or reinforcement learning? Are you interested with um, video or text or audio or EEG? Um, are you interested only in medical domains or do you only care about video games? So something like that. So it'll be some kind of self-matching process. So, but we'll, we'll figure out how to make, make that uh, work smoothly, especially since, again, there are people here from different departments and have different backgrounds. And I know there's a bunch of uh, students who just joined U of A, so they don't really know anyone. Um, boy, this is a weird time to join U of A. Side note, I have, I have never been to my office. Um, I've also, there's many of my students that I've never met in person. So that's awesome. Uh, but yeah, so what I'll try to figure out how to help you um, help form those teams. Oh, sorry, um, EEG, what does that stand for? Um, yes, oh, uh, yes, in Discord, there's the answer. I am not gonna try to pr pronounce that. That's why I'm gonna call it EEG. Um, okay, I already talked about email. There's the course email, there's Discord. E class and bear tracks. Oh, so my understanding is that bear tracks is used to sign up for classes and then never used again. I'm not. I'm not really sure what bear tracks is, is useful for. I don't think we need that anymore. Um, but e class will be for submitting any any assignments. Um, yeah, exactly like Neuralink. Um, recording office hours privacy. Oh yeah. So if if you if you do not want your video or name to be recorded, please talk to me and we'll figure out how to make that work. Um, I don't want any, I, I know of people who would not want their, their face or voice to be recorded and put on the internet. So if you are in that position, please let me know and we will figure something out. Um, now I'd like to introduce Hogger and Nick. Um, so they are the two TAs for the class. Um, Hogger is a master's student um, who is working on off-policy reinforcement learning, and Nick is an undergraduate who's been uh, helping to lead this pro project on interactive machine learning that I'll talk about uh, in a little bit. So maybe, Hogger, you could go first and just say, say a little bit about yourself. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Hogger. Um, I'm a second year master's student, so apparently this is the second year. Uh, apparently we have a new semester starting. Um, I'm working on, uh, for my master's thesis, I'm working on a, a policy uh, batch reinforcement learning. Uh, if you're interested uh, to know more about this or you want to chat about research at any point of time, just ping me. Uh, and yeah, I'll just... Uh, yeah, I'm also working on uh, another project related to uh, a human uh, human uh, like human feedback uh, RL. So it's uh, it's directly related. My it's it's, more, it's way may, way more related to interactive machine learning, um, and might be a, a bit related to the Hippo gem that Matt were, is gonna introduce in a while. Um, uh, I think that this is gonna be an interesting class for me to to both learn from and TA. Uh, and yeah, um, nice to virtually meet you all. Thanks, Hogger. Nick, do you want to say a bit about yourself and your experience this summer? Yeah, sure. So my name is Nick. Uh, I joined the uh, Interactive Robot Learning Laboratory or Intelligent Robot Learning Laboratory this summer uh, to work on a project that we dubbed uh, Hippo Gym. Uh, it's a framework for doing uh, human interaction over the web, so allowing you to gather data uh, quickly. Uh, and efficiently. Uh, I am here primarily to help with technical problems, I suppose, and uh, with those dev operations problems when you're trying to collect human data. Uh, I'm probably the one you're going to ask to, how am I going to do this quickly, easily, this doesn't work, that kind of thing, uh, and help troubleshoot that. Uh, my background before becoming an undergraduate was mostly emergency medicine and aviation. Um, so I have a, a breadth of experience outside of computing as well. Uh, and I'm happy to talk about anything. Welcome all to the class. Yeah, and and emergency medical services are, are rescue, search and rescue are 
areas that people are actively working on AI human collaboration and figuring out what, what we can automate and uh, learn versus what needs to be controlled by a human. So if people, if people find that topic interesting, we might be able to um, leverage some of Nick's background to make things more realistic. Tons of real world experience there. And I shot down a bunch of commercial products when, uh, when I was working in that field. And, and here's the Hippo Gym, a human input parsing platform for OpenAI, OpenAI Gym. So if you are interested in doing reinforcement learning, uh, we've, we've got this platform, which we're hoping to have a beta release in about a month that we can use in this class to very easily get human input into anything that's in OpenAI Gym. So OpenAI Gym is this general framework for doing reinforcement learning. So you can have Atari games, robot control, um, simple control problems like cart pull, all of that. Uh, oh, also, so I wanted to, to mention that we did, uh, we did Hippo Gym. Well, I shouldn't say did. We are hoping to release Hippo Gym soon. So this is an active area of research. Other research I do is um, on humans interacting with reinforcement learning. So later this semester, I'm hoping to have a, a startup called AI Redefined give, give a lecture. And their, their whole startup is based on humans interacting with machine learning agents. So I'm trying to come up with, a, uh, with some um, external speakers that are both in industry and academia so that you can get a sense of where this kind of stuff might be useful. Exactly. Um, so in Discord, uh, someone asked, can we collect human data from OpenAI Gym environment through Hippo? Oh, and Nick said yes. Uh, yeah, so it's, it should be an easy way of collecting human data. So in the past, I've done, a, I've done a bunch of projects with humans in the loop, and every student would need to spend uh, three, four months coming up with a good user interface. And then I had the bright idea, why am I making people do this over and over again? We should standardize. So I'm, I'm excited about providing this tool, but for people who are not doing reinforcement learning, I will also work with you to find other existing tools so that the, the more we can use, the more we can leverage, the less you have to build from scratch. Um, okay, so now I want to try something out. So, oh, let me look at these two questions really quick. Is there a way of including another human control agent? There may be a way of having multiple humans in, the, in, in, uh, in these gym environments, not sure yet. And in the class we're planning, I was planning on collecting, interacting with humans. So that could be collecting data from humans. If you wanted to use an existing data set that was collected from humans, that might be okay. But we can, we can figure that out. So what I would like you to do is go to pollev, short for polleverywhere.com, slash Matt Taylor. Note there are three Ts. Okay. So it looks like people were able to access this website. Um, so not meeting people, not chatting about research ideas. I totally agree with you. It is so nice to be able to just grab a beer or grab a coffee with someone. And it's much harder to do. But hopefully, um, as we form groups of people with similar interests, you'll have some of these me meetings uh, synergistically. Um, I think it, it is a good idea to try to set aside some time for, for just hanging out with friends, but also hanging out with research colleagues. I agree, being able to watch the lectures, conferences are nice. I, I am actually broadcasting from my basement. So my cats will not be showing up on screen unless something goes wrong. Um, so one, one of the failure modes I heard is that people could, uh, the professor would say, okay, go into the breakout rooms and talk for 10 minutes and then come back. So everyone would go into the breakout rooms and then just go get some food and come back nine minutes later. So I, hopefully we can avoid that. Um, also, I, I saw a few instances where people forgot to mute and were using the restroom. That was, that was kind of fun. Um, okay, so, so during, during lectures, I'm hoping that we can use the Discord and, <laughs> and you'll see the cat one day. Um, uh, hopefully through Discord and poll, every, poll everywhere, we can keep the lectures more interactive 
Um, but hopefully we will also have people start uh, breaking in and asking questions audibly. So I'll figure out how to, how to encourage that more. But it looks like we do have a range. So while we go over, while we are in this class for this semester, if you are a machine learning expert and I'm not going into enough depth or I am not giving you enough technical content, please let me know. If you are on the other end, and do not have a machine uh, as much machine learning background and you feel like you're getting lost and I am going too deep, let me know that as well. I will probably not be able to perfectly satisfy everyone every class, but I hope that I provide good value for, for everyone who is taking this. Okay, so moving on. Um, okay, so I mentioned there'll be a bunch of guest lectures. There will be reading. Um, it, again, it should be co completely manageable. I'll be clear about when it is. Oh, um, so Hippo Gym, I mentioned there, there would be a RL project, or a short RL project that you could do. So one of those projects I was thinking of would be to download Hippo Gym and um, we would uh, tell you where to, where to insert some code so that you could create a learning agent that could learn from a person. And then you would run Hippo Gym to teach an agent to play Mario or Pac-Man. So that's that for these exercises, that's the kind of thing they will be. Um, so in that in that case, it could just be, you know, kind of cookie cutter, or we could say, you know, if, if for a stretch goal, if you'd like, pick one of these algorithms, here are the papers and tweak the implementation so you could use it. So if you wanna get into the, the ML details, you can absolutely do that, but try to learn something about ML, about a platform and get experience interacting with a machine. So I'm gonna point out that if you have never seen this teachable machine with Google, it's pretty cool. So um, I'm not requiring that you that you look at this, but I and I, I'm not going to give a demo because trying to demo this while I'm using my camera and microphone wouldn't work. But the idea is that you can, in basically in real time, use um, pictures or your camera or your microphone to teach things like teach the difference between me and dog, metal or metal music or not metal. Do I have? Do I look like I have wings or do I look like a tree? So I would encourage you before Thursday to check out Teachable Machine with Google.com. And now that I say that out loud, I could actually put that in the Discord chat. Um, uh, right. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, I had a slide of just talking about the projects. It could be reinforcement learning, could be supervised, it could be unsupervised. My ideal project would be something that will benefit your research personally. So if, if we come up with this cool idea and it goes into a paper, awesome. If, if we can do some project related to humans and machine learning that you could use in your research after this class going forward, that would be ideal. So that way, this is directly helping your research. If, if you don't have a, a, a thesis topic yet, and this is just something you're doing for fun because you had to take a class and this course looked interesting, that's totally fine too. But if, if this was beneficial to you longer term, that would be the best, both because it'll be useful for you and because it'll, it'll help, um, help you pick something that you're excited about. And these groups, like I said, can be different sizes. If you're in a 10 person group, you better, you better have an amazing project because um, the expectations scale with the number of people. Um, so I was wondering now if, if anyone, based on this kind of rambling I've been doing, does anyone have any ideas about the kind of project they might want to do because they've, they've already been thinking about this in other research? Would anyone, does, does anyone have any ideas off the top of their head? Uh, so, hi, David here. Um, so just initial 
project idea. Um, I guess if anyone's ever uh, heard of like Kenneth Stanley, the guy that does all like the novelty search kind of stuff and like evolutionary algorithms kind of stuff, um, he he he's current. He has this big spiel about like open endedness um, in like machine learning and just AI in general. And I guess the idea that I had was um, playing with a an RL agent in, or whatever agent in order to, I don't know, maybe better uh, in order for it to learn a better model of the environment or for it to do some other task later on. But that was just an initial idea I wanted to throw out there. Thanks. Yeah, nice. I think I think there are a few people who are talking about medical related stuff. Yeah, I think it's also interesting the stuff related with uh, how to use an agent or some some robot or some computer to best teach a, like a human being, <laughs> as opposed to the inconsistencies of real teachers you get. Ouch. So that's, Okay, uh, I'll just step back and let you program me. That's fine. Um, and yeah, and that's and that's uh, what uh, intelligent tutoring systems are trying to do. They've got a long way to go. But if if we are going to educate people at scale, you need to figure out how to scale up the limited number of teachers so that you can have personalized experiences for more people. And you've absolutely got to think about the human there. And you're going to have to customize and learn about the human. Hi, uh, Laura. I'd be interested in working with uh, EMG or EEG data in order to control robotic arms and grippers. Awesome. Um, and so a number, a number of years ago, I worked on a project that was using eye gaze to control the wheelchair. Mm -hmm. So I, I've stayed away from brain stuff because it's scary. Um, it just such a noisy signal but there are so many awesome things that so much um, uh, assistive technology we could have if we were able to do that reliably and um, cost effectively. Hey, Any other? Hey, Scott, yeah, Sam. Here. Um, I worked on a, a project over the summer of you're basically doing semantic segmentation of diffusion MRI images of the brain. And the guys that we were working with noticed you know some ways that the our our model was making mistakes uh, based on whatever other stuff that they they knew and i'm just wondering if maybe it would be possible to have you know these um biomedicine people interacting with this segmentation network kind of showing how like why i guess why certain things are are segmented a certain way based on whatever age and other stuff Absolutely. That's, that's very cool. Charlie here. Hi. Uh, I uh, have some ideas about uh, dynamic treatment region. Uh, and uh, uh, basically, uh, people uh, measure their physical body, uh, uh, physical um, identifications for a doctor to make any treatment plans. Uh, day by day or month by month, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I've, I have no idea how easy that would be, but it sounds like if it worked, it could be pretty impactful. Yeah, I uh, look at some papers that uh, they use Q learning, a reinforcement learning on that. Yeah, but yeah, but we can find a way to use maybe interactive uh, H HCI or something with it. Mm -hmm. Nice. Hi, uh, my project is focusing on dementia and Alzheimer on older adults. So I really like to use machine learning to measure the engagement of people. And then, or using some games or making some games that engage people more to reduce the dementia on on older ages. Cool. I've seen I've seen work on using um, games to try to measure or predict Alzheimer's and dementia progression, 
but trying to figure out how attentive or it, whether people are paying attention sounds difficult but interesting. Yeah. I'm interested in medical diagnostics uh, and especially in uh, the interaction of uh, healthcare providers with an AI algorithm in order to improve its usability and uh, trustworthiness. Nice. Uh, random random comment. Um, I, for two years between undergrad and grad school, I worked at a, a healthcare software company, and one of the big things was getting getting providers and clinicians to not only understand the system but trust it. Uh, they, you you got this was around two thousand and one, and some doctors did not know how to use a mouse, and they only trusted their handwritten notes. Or they wanted a person to annotate. Uh, or, or uh, type it up for them and getting, hopefully that's changed a bit. Um, I'm interested in uh, intelligent tutor systems as well, specifically around language learning. Um, mm -hmm. I think that there is a ton in education that can be done in terms of like the interaction between um, like human and AI, in, especially in terms of like um, you know, obviously you get taught by the AI for the education part, but also um, some form of having like uh, the human training it as well as a form of like personalization. Um, yeah. All right. Well, thank you for sharing their, your initial thoughts. I think this helps not only um, show that there's a wide range of things that people are interested in, but I think also shows that there'll be a bunch of things that different people will find exciting. Um, so my, my goal is really to, to make this class fun and interesting, but also useful. So do as we, as we go forward, think about how, how I can best do that.